Welcome to lesson 6. We're still busy with difference of two squares, dots, and we're going to start with exercise 4, which is the second exercise on dots. So if you can please write down the sums, press pause, do the sums, and then come back to check out the answers. Right, let's have a look at number 1. Number 1 was 5 x to the power of 8 minus 5. So in this case we can see that my highest common factor is 5 and I'm left with x to the power of 8 minus 1. So if I have a look at this x to the power of 8 minus 1, that's basically going to be difference of two squares, dots, because I've got two terms negative in the middle. So my answer here is going to be 5. plus minus so it's x to the power of the square root of x to the power of 8 is x to the power of 4 right? because if I take x to the power of 4 multiplied by x to the power of 4 I get back to x to the power of 8 the square root of 1 is going to be 1 what's interesting about this one over here is that I can factorize this further as well so I need to f and if you if you haven't factorized that further can factorize that further. So I've got x to the power of 4 plus 1 over here. And then same principle. These two terms, there's a negative in the middle, both are perfect squares. So it's plus minus square root of x to the power of 4 is x squared. And I've got a 1 and a 1. But if I ever look at it, this year is also a difference of two squares because that's a perfect square. That's a perfect square. There's a negative in the middle. So my final answer over here is going to be over here. This is not a dots because of the plus sign in the middle. There has to be a negative sign in the middle. So sometimes the first thing that you've got to look out for is is there a negative sign in the middle. So all I'm doing now, I've written that down, the 5 down as is, that I've written down as is, as well as the x squared plus 1. So the only thing that I'm going to change now or factorize is the x squared minus 1. So that becomes x and x, and that becomes 1 and 1. It seems like a long sum, but all we're doing is we're looking out for difference of squares all the time. So we've started with common factor and then difference of squares and we keep looking for different types of factorizations right so that's number one we're going to move on to number two now if you want to pause it and work through the sum again that's fine it is a bit of a, a longer sum number two so number two we've got one minus nine a squared b squared so our answer in this case is going to be got plus minus square root of 1 is 1 and 1 and then we have to take the square root of 9 a squared b squared so once again we can break it up the square root of 9 is 3 the square root of a squared is a and the square root of b squared is b so that's my answer I can't factorize any further from that that was number 2 if you have a look at number 3 You've got a quarter minus 1 over 9 b squared. Now, as I said earlier, please don't be please don't be afraid of fractions. Fractions are your friends. So what we're going to do over here is same principle. It's, you've got two terms, the negative in the middle, both are perfect squares. How do we know that? If we take the square root of a quarter, the easiest way to do that is to break that up and say it's the square root of 1 over the square root of 4 so that is equal to 1 over 2 you guys see that? so you got a plus and a minus there so the square root of a quarter is 1 over 2 because when you multiply it out 1 over 2 multiplied by 1 over 2 it's numerator times numerator is 1 denominator times denominator so there we go if we take the square root of 1 over 9 b squared once again if you're going to take the square root of 1 over 9, you're going to break that up between the square root of 1 over the square root of 9, which gives us 1 over 3. 
So I've got 1 over 3. And the square root of b squared is going to be b. So that's your answer over there. All right. Let's move on to number 4. If you want to have a look again, it's, um, if it's a bit tricky for you, have a look at the sum. Just spend some time with it and go over it again and see if you can do it on your own. If we have a look at number 4, you've got a minus b squared minus a plus b squared. Okay, so when we have a look at this one over here, a good idea in this case is to use square brackets. You've got two terms. There's a negative in the middle. Both are perfect squares. So you'll see that I've made it fairly big. So you've got a plus and a minus there. So the square root of a minus b squared is just going to be a minus b. I'm not putting this in brackets because there's a positive in front. So the signs remain exactly the same. But this over here I'd like to put in brackets. So that's a plus, the square root of a plus b squared is a plus b, so it's a plus b. And over here it's a plus b as well. So what I now need to do is I can get rid of the square brackets because I'm going to multiply everything out. So it's a minus b. It's a positive, so both those signs remain the same because a positive times a positive is a positive. Positive times a positive is a positive over there. Over here you've got a minus b. And this is why we wanted to put this in brackets so that we don't make an algebraic error over here. It's a negative times a positive, so that's negative a. And I've got a negative times a positive there, which is negative b. And then the last step is just to simplify. So there I've got a plus a, so that gives me 2a. Minus b plus b cancels out. And over here I've got a minus a, that cancels out, and that's minus um in fact yeah so that's going to be minus b minus b so that's minus 2b and that's my answer right so let's uh, so you can have a look at that one we're going to move on to number five now right, if we have a look at number five you've got your four x minus y squared minus nine x plus y squared so similarly over here, it's probably a, a bit of a tricky sum, but the, the same criteria applies. So do we have two terms? The answer is yes. There's one term, there's another term. Is there a negative in the middle? Yes. Are both terms perfect squares? Yes, they are. The square root of 4, x minus y squared is going to be, the square root of 4 is 2, x minus y. So once again, I suggest that we use square brackets over here. and we've got a plus and a minus so the square root over there is going to give us 2 x minus y square root of 4 is 2 square root of x minus y squared is just x minus y so we're going to put that over there and over here same thing over here the square root of 9 is 3 so the 3 goes over there and the square root of x plus y squared is x plus y so now, although we're doing factorization, we now have to simplify. So you left here with 2 times x is 2x, 2 times negative y is minus 2y, plus 3x plus 3y, multiplied by 2x minus 2y, minus 3x minus 3y. My final answer here is I've got 5x. 2x plus 3x is 5x plus y multiplied by x minus 5y. Alright, thanks for listening guys. In the next lesson, when we move on to lesson 7, we're moving on to a different type of factorization called trinomials.